Good day, everyone, and welcome to Kingdom of Atham, Crown of the Champions. The first thing we do upon logging in is typically talk to uh, Osmodius. However, as I uh, get a little distracted here, I decide to collect fiber, stones, branches, and wood. With these materials, we can craft clothing, we can craft weapons, we can craft tools. Now, all very basic tools. As you'll see, I'm also collecting mushrooms, which can be eaten for just a little bit of uh, hunger uh, coverage. Uh, but where they're most useful is grind them up and make potions with them. But we'll get to that later. Here is the beautiful Savage Town. You can go that way uh, after picking up your things with Osmodius. Or... There is a, another path, which we caught a glimpse of a little bit ago, that leads away from the sleepy little village. So now we've got tools, we've got an axe, we've got a pickaxe, we've got a basic spear, we have some water, we have some food, and we have a torch that we've been graciously given by the gods to get started on our journey. A little bit of time chasing around the ibexes and then we say hi to our dear friend the troll before making our way down the hill and away from the village obviously continuing our distracted path of grab all the easy to pick up resources we do currently have the tools to cut down a tree or chop up the stone, iron, or coal nodes that we may come across, but I've decided today that I don't want to do anything but pick things up off the ground for the moment and enjoy a brisk walk in the snow with not but what the gods gave me to wear. Now you'll notice that the bottom bar, the blue bar in the upper left hand corner, is uh, dropping away quickly because my character is thirsty. The further that drops, the less quickly you regenerate health, mana, and stamina from running around. Uh, the bar right above that is the hunger bar. Keep it full, you also regenerate those items more quickly. Uh, now we did have the crossroads there. Uh, a left will take you towards the human area. And as you can see, we took a right, so we are heading closer 
to the Dryad area. As you can see, there's a large beast up ahead. That's right, kids. It's a mammoth. And I can tell you from other playthroughs that I've had with this game uh, that those boys run fast. So, until you're ready to take them on, I highly recommend just staying out of their sight range. Here I decided to take a peek at a cute little valley. And that is a golem. Uh, there are different golems in each uh, area. Fire, stone, the like. They can hurt a little bit. So, as I'm running around with the basic spear, I've decided to not confront the golems at this time. And you can watch my stamina bar, that green bar, drop like a rock because I am sprinting right now. Trying to avoid the mammoths. Uh, but I'm not so scared of the mammoths that I don't stop to uh, pick up the fiber. Uh, the nice thing about the savage area is a lot of the resources, especially in the snowy areas, are easier to see picking them up off the ground. Um, if it's if it's sticking up out of the snow, a lot of times it is something that you can gather. Uh, fiber looks like either that dried wheat looking stuff. Took a little break to uh, get stamina back up, eat something, drink something, before we head down into the valley. You can see those orange and green trees off in the distance on that island. That island is technically part of the Dryad Lands, uh, which are very predominantly covered with those similar kinds of trees, aside from the swamp area, which we will visit at some point. Uh, this green plant here is also fiber, uh, and like I was going to say earlier, there is also the fern looking plants that are up in the snow that look like half buried uh, ferns that also give you fiber. Branches, wood, rocks, pretty easy to tell what they are. Uh, you can also get fiber from grabbing uh, berry plants, bushes. Um, so here I am taking a look at the lovely map, which is accessed with the M key by default. Just trying to figure out where I want to go to get a base set up. But getting a base set up is not as important as grabbing more fiber.
I will be honest, I did cut out a good chunk of resource gathering, um, but I did leave some in so that you guys can get a feel for the general mechanics of it. Occasionally the rocks do like to glitch out a little bit, and uh, as you're breaking them down you gotta kinda shift around, find that sweet spot. Uh, that steadily gets improved uh, each time that they do updates. I live for the hits where the stone just flies up in the air. A little extra pleasing. Alright, here we're rising, getting to the top of a hill, looking down into a valley with some more trees. Probably the densest forest that we've uh, seen in the savage area so far, since the pine trees are skinny looking things. Oh, there's another fern. Uh, if you saw that flash of pink up on the top of the hill, that is a pink crystal. There is pink, green, blue, red, and orange crystals uh, that are used in jewelry making, in um, magic, so creating... Uh, wands and magic spells require crystals, uh, as well as uh, just making little gems that you can kind of carry around with you. They give you little buffs depending on how you crafted it. Still just on the hunt for a nice place to put a base down that is not terribly far from a lot of decent resources. Um, this area is kind of nice because we're looking at several pink crystals, uh, which is lightning magic. The black stones with the light lining, uh, in this case, is iron. There is also silver and gold. Uh, silver and gold being in uh, typically more dangerous areas. So if you see a black rock with silvery lines in it, it's more than likely iron. Uh, and then there is the darker black rocks that are coal. So we can already see that this is a fairly nice area. We do have some enemies. Those are denoted over there at the edge of the screen. Occasionally with the red glowing name tags. Uh, in this case, it is uh, various mountain cats called stalkers. When you kill the animals that are um, aggressive, especially, uh, you have a chance of getting a little statue, and that little statue can be used in summoning magic, which we may get to one day, depending on how our path in this world goes. Uh, here we are attempting a little bit of mountain goading. Uh, now be careful because falling, sliding down hills can cause you damage depending on how far and uh, your landing 
sometimes you, yeah, j just assume that you're probably going to hurt yourself if you decide to slide down the mountain. Um, occasionally you'll get by okay, but cliff diving is probably deadly in most cases. As I mine away at these rocks, I'm thinking about how great it would be to have upgraded tools. But in order to use those tools, I have to get more experience. So it's a it's a thing. See there I got lucky because it was a smaller drop, I didn't really lose any health. like we've got some lightning and some rain going on in game uh, I do highly recommend when there is a lightning storm just looking around the lightning in this game is absolutely beautiful especially at night At this point, at least, uh, lightning is not something that is going to injure you. Um, however, as this is an early release game uh, on Steam, you never know when that might change, um, depending on the feedback that they get from those of us playing and participating. There are three possible ways you can really truly enjoy this game. Uh, there is the public servers, which can be PvE or PvP, so pay attention to what you're selecting depending on how you want to play. And then uh, hosted servers, hosted by individuals. I am playing on a friend's hosted server that is set up as PvE. Uh, people can also host their own PvP servers. Um, they, uh, people can also host on their own machine uh, PvP or PvE servers. And then you can just play by yourself on a solo world. So here I've decided that I am going to call this area home, at least for the time being. I've put down some basic uh, foundation. I've put down a land claim so that I can not have to worry about a quick decay of any of my buildings. It also keeps it so that once I have doors and things like that, people cannot uh, as easily access my items. Uh, so very handy thing, especially on a PvP server, um, you know, depending on your playstyle on PvE. It might be super important to you as well. Um, you will see later as we play. Um, I'm a sharer, so I pretty much... You need it. Go ahead. Now, my biggest strategy when it comes to resource gathering um, is 
I do as much gathering as I possibly can. Go, 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 nonstop during the day. Because you will see, when we get to nighttime, it's really dark. And it can be kind of difficult to... get anything done, really. So I like how I uh, just did a bunch of rocks, and I'm like, ooh, maybe I can build some more stuff. Oh, wait, I need wood. Because basically, tier one buildings, pretty much all wood. And then you get to the point where you start using like brick and stone and stuff like that as you can continue to upgrade using the hammer which is a super easy tool to build uh, with the hammer you can also destroy your building that you've put down oh we leveled up Every time you level up, uh, the standard default is you get two skill points. I believe on uh, hosted servers for, by individuals, this can potentially be tweaked. I really don't know why I decided to go after the pink crystals right now uh, given don't really have the base done uh, however I did know that I'd be playing with at least one or two people that really really love lightning magic so that was probably the thought going through my head is oh I need all the pink crystals not thinking about the fact that I, I've got like three or four nodes very close to where I'm at. And really don't need tons of iron yet either. Um, aside from, you know, getting experience uh, smelting it so that I can... Um, get my blacksmithing up but there's no wrong way as long as you got place to store stuff uh, as you can see right above my uh, toolbar I've got a you know 10 ton weight You'll notice my gait is a little bit different as I'm walking now that I am overweight in what I'm carrying. Um, this does get fixed along the way. Um, you will notice um, probably in the next episode or two that uh, it is much more significant change. Uh, when you are overweight, which is a little bit more realistic. Because here, you know, I, I basically have just lost the ability to sprint. Which, while well, yes, when you're over, you know, over encumbered, you shouldn't be able to sprint. But, uh, I think if I remember right, like, I would load myself up to, like, twice the allowed amount to carry and not be that terribly bothered because I never had to climb, you know, you also couldn't climb. So you couldn't sprint and you couldn't climb. And your walk was a little bit slower, weird looking. Um, so thankfully they did update that to be a little bit more fair, especially on the PvP side, uh, because, you know, it, it doesn't feel fair for somebody to load up with 500 pounds of stuff 
and still be able to just stroll away from you. Almost like nothing's, you know, going on. Oh, you'll see that uh, when I picked up mushrooms, I got uh, bugs, which are useful in a couple of different applications. Uh, you can build fishing traps and put the bugs in them and uh, passively catch fish. Uh, you do need to check periodically and clean out your fishing traps as the fish do not stack. Um, or you can grind those uh, bugs and mosquitoes up to get blood. Uh, blood is needed to make blood ink. Uh, and blood ink is a very, very important ingredient in all things magic. I'm still overweight and I'm still just loading up on materials as we can see here. I am starting to make my way back towards the base now though. You may wonder why uh, I quite obviously am doing this sound after the fact. Um, when I was recording this, I had uh, my children laughing and playing and having a good time in the background, also watching me. Uh, so I decided that it would probably be better experience for everyone if I wasn't completely distracted uh, as I was talking, and it also felt like a better idea knowing that I was probably going to have to cut things, such as a lot of th this resource gathering, um, as well as, you know, moments where I had to step away for a second to help a child. Um... Uh, most of what I cut was resource gathering. Um, I think I, you know, I don't start small. I, uh, once I kind of know what's going on, I did play this game when it was uh, beta testing. I did, uh, and play played the demo before they went, went into beta testing um, so I've I've had a little bit of time in this game already at the point where I'm doing this recording um, so there there's no start small for me anymore uh, you know start small was you know the first few times that I logged in during beta testing Uh, so here you can see I built the hammer. Uh, we can attempt to rotate things. The land claim's a little tricky sometimes. Um, I could also break it with the bomb icon you saw there. Uh, and then if it's something that is upgradable, you will see that option as well. And it'll tell you what materials you need in order to do that. Uh, so here I am stubbornly trying really hard to place foundation where the game doesn't want to let me. And I, th and I keep going, oh, if only I rotated the land claim. Maybe that would work. Nope, not at all. 
I can't tell you why the game did not like that location, aside from it being a little too far, possibly, from the landscape below. Uh, which is the difficulty of building on the side of a hill. You got some interesting uh, challenges with foundations and building up and things like that. So here we're going to get some walls up. I don't know why I bothered with walls, because honestly, just letting everybody... Um, join me anyway if they can uh, but you do need some sort of support to have upper floors and I knew I was going to need multiple floors um, because um, you do need to have a bed to set a uh, spawn point otherwise you continue to spawn uh, back at whichever um, species uh, spawn point you initially started at. Uh, so savages would continue to spawn way up on the mountain. Um, dryads have a spot near their dryad town and humans have a spot near their human town. I am overall happy with having the lookout over the river. It's very pretty to look out on. However, it definitely was not the easiest location to try and build. Um, I, I decided that I just wanted to keep this little uh, side balcony going, I guess. Here, we're going to get the ceiling up. So we can contemplate the second floor. Um, now, you will see that I did a lot of square building here. Um, there are uh, angled smaller pieces that you can do uh, different um, different shapes you can put together uh, on your foundation. And then the walls and everything else snap to that and you build up from there. Uh, if you take a look at the left side of this, uh, we've got basic character info and then there's the professions tab. Uh, in the professions tab, you can see where you're at with your automatic leveling up of your various professions. Uh, each different weapon has a different profession name, so you're leveling them up separately. Uh, so when it comes to your weapon, especially, specialization can be very helpful. Um, and then there is gathering what i was doing at the very beginning picking stuff off, off the ground collecting fiber that's gathering um lumberjack chopping down trees obviously miner chopping up rocks and crystals um and then um your enchanter your alchemy your uh brewing blacksmith you know all these things are various professions that you can either choose to specialize in and have yourself a little community where you've got you know the person in charge of you know making all the potions and you've got the person in charge of you know cutting down all the wood and you got the person in charge you know of you know 
doing all, uh, making all the magic. Now the person making the magic does not have to be the same person that is using the magic, which is nice uh, because those skills are completely unrelated. Uh, using magic, highly recommend uh, if you, that you grab uh, some extra intelligence on your character uh, because that can help make your spells go better. However, as a profession, at least at this point, um, it doesn't really matter that much what you are what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you put it in strength or agility or toughness or intelligence or luck. Most of the professions, aside from the combat ones like magic and the weapons, um, don't really require any of those skills. Now, they can help, like, um, you know, go all strength if you are going to literally just be the gatherer, lumberjack, miner of the group. Uh, if you go all strength, I highly recommend doing a strength-based weapon. Um, that can definitely help. Uh, agility is great for, that's how quick your, uh, energy regenerates and how much energy you have in general. Uh, so great for those ranged or fast, uh, faster weapons. Uh, toughness, good for the tank. Uh, if you want to take a lot of beating and keep on going, toughness is for you. Uh, intelligence, like I mentioned, uh, very big for the magic wielders. Uh, and then luck is a uh, chance for crits. So if you are looking for those big numbers, the more luck you have, possibly you get to see more of those. All right, off to do another bit of resource run here. Uh, pick up uh, clay and sand, very, uh, very helpful. Oh, here we got a crab coming to visit. There is also a cooking profession. So the better your cooking is, the better dishes you can make. Uh, they require more ingredients, but probably give you a little bit better... Uh, better buffs. I'll have to admit I have not delved very deep into the cooking profession as of yet, um, but very much looking forward to seeing what is in those upper tiers of the profession when I get there. Because uh, my basic goal is I'm not going to be heavy in combat, however, I will be once I can uh, get set up and do uh, iron weapons. I will be doing the fist weapons primarily uh, for my character. Because you could dual wield those, so basically you got iron knuckles and your... Uh, Beating up monsters. Uh, 
so stone tools you don't you can't repair uh, because it's cheaper to just do a new one um, but uh, iron and higher tools uh, you do want to repair um, and there are repair kits that you can make Um, basically for different amounts of iron you can or different kinds of iron because you have the the basic ones that do, you don't need to smelt the iron and then the uh, nicer ones require some smelted iron in order to create but you get more bang for your buck basically I contemplated going down and uh, chopping down those trees down there, but there be enemies down there. And you see the occasional uh, flash of a red name tag. So I won't go any further than right about where I was at. thinking about it um, you definitely want I think everybody should get some points in agility um, because that affects how much energy you have to do stuff uh, so if you're not gonna grab points in, in agility uh, there are energy potions uh, which chug one you get some energy back um, which can be very helpful uh, especially PvP, uh, if you're using a weapon that is faster, like dual dual wielding daggers or the uh, fist weapons, uh, you will you will drain your energy fairly quickly uh, if you're fighting for more than short little battles. And here, I've run out of energy to chop down trees. Which, you can regen energy fa a little bit faster by sitting down on the ground. However, that, uh, that just doesn't seem to interest me right now. Probably would have had more energy if I had just sat myself down, but, you know, standing there, staring at the tree and panting seemed like a good idea at the time. As you can 
can see I no longer have a axe. I do have a pickaxe. Spot number five is the hammer. I don't know why I was out carrying it around since the hammer is useless out in the world unless you're destroying buildings that you put down. Can't forget to grab that fiber as I'm heading back. I think my goal here was to basically mine until I didn't have a pickaxe left. But I ran out of easy access to stone. Rope, which is made from fiber, is a very key part to the early game. I'm trying to think of how to use utilize my very questionable storage.
Get things set up. Get. Uh, so in order to use a crafting bench, the stuff either has to all be in your inventory or all in the bench's inventory. So you can't have some things in your inventory and some things in the bench's inventory. So good thing to keep in mind. Um, as you level the benches up to tier 2 or tier 3, they have more space for storage. Uh, as well as more recipes of things that you can do based on your level for the associated profession. Uh, so the workbench, a lot of the things are uh, a little more blacksmith related. So as you level up blacksmith, you may see additional recipes pop up in your bench if you have a high enough bench for the items. So you will probably see me uh, rushing tier 2, tier 3 benches as quickly as possible. That way I don't have to wonder if it's a me problem or a bench problem that I can't see something that I think I should be seeing for a recipe. Getting some basic things built, a mortar, a bed, um, a well. A uh, well is very helpful for refilling your water skin, as well as if you're going to be gardening, which is a much more efficient way of getting things like fiber and the rare flowers, things like that. Um, you you want a well. It's It's the only way to do anything with water really at this point aside from you can jump in the river and drink the water to take care of your thirst problem all right so now i got a bed down i can claim the bed now if i die i am going to respawn there as long as the bed is still there realize i do not have a door on my house which can be a nice thing to aesthetically take care of having. It's not necessarily required functionally on a PvE server, unless you want to keep people out of your house. Now to watch the lightning. We will leave you here with a little lightning and we will come back next time with the next day. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy. Give me a follow, subscribe, whatever. Or leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Have a great night. Bye.